Welcome to Reflections, a show that seeks to examine if others see God in your reflection and how Scripture relates to us in this day and age. Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I am Father Bob Janine, the pastor of Mission St. Sergius in Bacchus, a Catholic ministry to those who have feel abandoned, unwelcomed, discriminated against, alienated, the sick, the elderly, and all of God's children. We are a ministry of the Reformed Catholic Church and of the Franciscans of Mercy, a small Franciscan community of which I am the Servant General. Today, we will be discussing the readings for Sunday, the 23rd of September. And the readings are from the Book of Wisdom, from James, Psalm 54, and the Gospel of Mark. And this week's readings have a powerful, very powerful message for us to consider. They talk about how people who boast about how great they are and how powerful they are, they could be very well in danger of God's design of things. I've chosen a few of the passages from today's readings for us to reflect upon and consider how we stand in relationship to these readings and how those in the public eye are stand in regards to those readings. The first reading is from James, chapter 3, verses 16. And it says, and I quote, For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil practice. But wisdom that comes from heaven is, first pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Think about it. Think about our political leaders and how they sit in regards to what I just read. We have seen recently a tribute to a truly great man, Senator John McCain stood up for what was right, what was fair, what was just. He often bucked party lines, so he was called a maverick. But ultimately, I'm certain that in God's eyes, he was not a maverick because he was standing up for what he felt was right and just and good. Where you have envy and self-ambition, you find disorder and every evil practice. Envy and self-ambition. How often have we, and leaders of corporations, governments, even churches, followed along that path. They were seeking fame, fortune, power. They were greedy. And that is just totally, completely opposite the will of God. And that's what we're here for. We're here on this earth to serve God and to serve one another. How does that scripture tell us to overcome the conditions in our life? How does it instruct us to overcome those desires, those very human desires? We're told by seeking 
the wisdom of God, and living a life that is considerate of others and not selfish and greedy. Living a life full of mercy, especially for those who are suffering because of poverty, homelessness, illnesses, or those who have been bigoted and rejected and bullied. Those are the people who we need to be compassionate and merciful for. We are told to seek out peace and not vengeance. I find it very disturbing and very frightening when a person, a leader of a government or a business or a church, become nasty and do things that are totally against God's will. When they sped, spread uh, misinformation, which is happening in our church even, there are some hierarchy who, because of jealousy or other interests that are opposite the greater good and the greater majority of the church, are speaking out negatively. That is the will of Satan. They've given in. They've fallen prey. They've fallen prey to Satan. Remember what we're told in Romans 12, verses 18 through 20. Dear friends, never avenge yourselves. Leave that to God. For it is written, I will take vengeance, I will repay those who deserve it, says the Lord. James 3 further tells us, the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Throughout all of Scripture, we have been instructed, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, to be kind, merciful, peace-loving, seeking justice and equality. So what's happened? Where have our values gone wrong? Because it seems like they have. We have people who are seeking the power. They're seeking to enhance the wealth of those who already have an abundance of wealth while overlooking the poor, the sick, the needy, the homeless. That's wrong. It is totally against God's will. We are now in what is called the season of harvest. And possibly we need to work harder than ever towards harvesting peace. Peace between those with whom we've had disagreements. We need to seek out equality and justice in all aspects of our life. We need to find the common ground to settle the arguments that have split up families and even the church. We worship one God, for there is only the one God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, and our Savior and Redeemer, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, did not the voice from the heavens proclaim, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased? Listen to him. So why aren't we listening? We have sown seeds of discontent 
among the seeds of peace and goodwill. And what we need to go out and harvest is that peace and goodwill and send that folly, that, that bad weeds of discontent into the flames. Mark's Gospel tells the story of how the apostles were arguing among themselves as to who was the greater. And you know, <laughs> that has continued throughout history. Who is the greater? Who is the greater? What we should be asking is, who is the greater servant? The servant of God and the servant to God's children. Christ knew this, for he knows all of our thoughts, our words, our actions. And when they got to where they would arrest, Christ gathered them together and asked them what they were discussing. When no one answered, Christ sat down and told them, he, if you want to be first, then you must be the very last. You must be the servant of everyone. Again, there's that word, servant, a servant, a servant of God and a servant of God's children. Jesus then took a little child and had the child stand among them. And he took the child in his arms and said to them, anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. Anyone who welcomes me welcomes not only me, but also the one who sent me his Father, Almighty God. Can Christ's message be any clearer? I doubt it. I don't know how it could be. If we wish to be a true leader, if we wish to be the first of first among people, we need then to become a servant to all. We need to have the innocence of a child, the trust of a child, putting our faith and our trust in Almighty God and not in material things, not in wealth, not in power. I find it amazing how Certain business people, church leaders, government leaders, all seem to think that they are, have dominion, that they're dominators, that if they open their mouth, that's what should be, even if it is not in the best interest of everyone. Hatred violence, anger, are tools of Satan. They are the tools he uses to separate us from God. Only should we be living our lives in accord with Christ's teachings but we need to make a concerted effort to emulate our Redeemer and Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, or St. Francis, our Seraphic Father, Mother Teresa. There are so many of the great saints who have given us examples of how to live, and that is why they've been called saints, because they did God's will. They lived God's will. 
They weren't bombastic. They weren't sending nasty messages. <laughs> it's, I find it amazing when a leader of a government or a business or a, a, any, any person who's supposed to be a leader uses nastiness and dissension and cause to, cause, tries to stir up the pot so that there's never actually peace and tranquility. What we need to do is examine how we relate to the issues that our family and the world are facing today. Do we judge people on how they look, how they dress, on the color of their skin, what church they attend, who their partner in life might be, or how much money they have? Is that what we're judging people on? If so, it's the wrong thing. What we need to judge people on is how good they are, how kind they are, how merciful they are, how charitable they are. That's what God judges people on, and that's what we need to judge people on. Not how successful they are. We need to judge people by how they treat one another. We live in very, very troubling times. We hear many versions of how life is going to change for us by doing one thing or another. Every TV commercial is promoting that if you use this product, your life is going to be a thousand times better. Or you eat this food, or drink this drink, and this is better than that, and that's better than this. But we don't hear on how we can become a better person by being kind, considerate, generous, merciful, forgiving. Politicians are promoting their agenda every day on television. We have an election coming up in November. We just had a el primary election. And everyone was talking about how great they were and how they're better than the other person. And some of the na ads were downright nasty. And that's what I'm talking about. When people resort to nastiness to try to achieve their goal, and when they resort to lies and try to make the lies seem like truth, they are doing Satan's work and not living in accordance with God. Politicians are promoting their agendas all over the TV and ads. Our lives and our world are, need change, yes. We need to make things better. We need to start taking care of the environment. We need to make sure that the homeless have places that, of adequate living. We need to make sure that the hungry are being fed. We need to shelter the homeless. We need to reach out for those who are sick. What we need to do is take a very serious examination of ourselves and our behavior and determine how closely it fits with what Christ taught us because what Christ taught us, why he came to this earth, was to make it very clear 
what God's will was for us. The challenge is ours. We cannot be seeking to be the top dog or the top gun. What we should be seeking is to be a servant to one another and to God. We need to become that servant of God, serving our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus by working to overcome the ills that are plaguing our society. I pray that Almighty God will grant us the wisdom to know and to live according to His way and not the way of mere mortals who are only worrying about themselves, totally self-centered and egotistical. May God grant us the patience, compassion, forgiveness, and courage to live our lives according to his teachings so that we will be welcomed by Almighty God when our time here on earth is over. We will hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what I hope to achieve. And that is what I hope you will seek to achieve. May God bless you and keep you. May he let his light shine upon you and fill you with his infinite mercy and love. Until we meet again, I invite you to visit our website, www.missionstsergius.org. That's Mission, S-T for Saint, S-E-R-G-I-U-S, Sergius, dot org. There you will find out about our ministry. You'll find out if you think that maybe God is calling you to be one of his servants as a member of the Franciscan community. You'll see, uh, go put your cursor on the tab that says syllabus, and you'll see what is involved. And while you're there, you'll see an oval that says donate. If you put your cursor on that, it'll bring you to PayPal, where you can safely and securely make a donation that will help us in our work serving nursing homes, hospices, senior living facilities, this TV show, and our other ministries. So until then, may God bless you and keep you. May he let his light shine upon you and fill you with his infinite mercy and love. May God bless you, Father. Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.